everybody and welcome back. Hope you guys are all doing well. Let's go ahead and hop right into a time lapse. I've got a pretty good one of me cleaning this amazing floor in this amazing room. And I got some really beautiful results. So I'll see you guys after that with the results. before I cleaned everything, after. And it's looking quite a bit nicer. Now one thing I wanna point out about this floor is there's a lot of staining going on with this kind of yellowy color. It's kind of all over the place. But the best way I found to get that out is actually with a drill with one of these little brush attachments and Barkeeper's Friend. That stuff is the only thing I found really that does a pretty good job of cleaning this up. I still have some marks like this one here. It's a bit more stubborn. I need to really work at that one. And then this issue right here where somebody left three paint cans sitting, or actually no, four paint cans, take it back. So there's one here and there was one here. And the reason you could just barely see the rim right here, you can kind of see some of this coloration is because I was able to get most of that one up. Also with that, there was a big, huge, I don't know, glob, I guess, of old paint right in this area. And those marks are all gone. But overall, really, really impressed with how it's starting to look. Of course, I have not done the whole floor. Obviously, you see the huge difference between there and there and there and there. And if I turn around, yeah, it's still quite dirty. But I also noticed a few little odd things about the floor. For one, they didn't actually use all just black tiles. These ones are actually a slightly different color than these ones. These ones are all like pure black and these have like a dark brown kind of color to them in these set of diamonds. Let me get this wet, it'll be a little easier to show you. So there we have it, it's a little bit easier to see. But you can just see this color is kind of a dark reddy brown and this is more of a solid black. And actually this diamond here seems like where they started to run out and they actually included three little brown ones right here. And actually as I've started looking at this floor closer, I've noticed minor imperfections here and there that actually give it a little bit of pretty awesome character. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So over here, this diamond, which is underneath one of the windows back by the electrical panel boxes, this diamond right here is actually missing two black tiles. Don't know if that was a replacement after the fact or they just ran it up black, so they went with that. I've also noticed some pretty terrible cuts along the edge here. You can see none of those are very straight or perfect cuts, but they've just filled it in with mortar. And of course, once you take a step back, you would never notice. So I think it's interesting that, you know, however long ago, some worker ran out of black tiles and well, I was like, well, these brown ones at the store are the closest I can find. And so they completed the floor with brown or the, hey, I ran out of black tiles. Can I just go ahead and throw these two little white tiles in? Or I don't know, maybe they had the apprentice cut the little tiles on the corners in that specific corner. And that's why they're a bit jagged. So it's, I don't know, it's interesting to kind of get into the head of the people who actually put this down. 
you know, it'd be interesting to know why they did what they did. Of course, those are questions I'll probably never have answers to, but it's fun to think about. So next, let's get into the wall behind me. This is one of the other big projects I've worked on this week. So I'll see you guys on the other side. So now we have a big, beautiful beadboard wall that looks like it had a really, really bad run-in with a razor blade. It looks like it's cut itself shaving. Uh, but what these all are were the nail holes, if you guys remember when this room was the vet clinic or when there was the dog grooming station. At some point, sometime, somebody put up these little brick soundproofing panels all over this room. Now, of course, I assume they put up soundproofing panels because they had animals down here. And dogs and cats can sometimes be quite loud. So I guess it makes sense why they would have done that. That's why there were so very, very many holes in this. Uh, and you can see all of them all over the place. It's, uh, it's definitely a little bit of a wreck. You can also see that I have not stripped the entire thing. That's because on further inspection, the wall was originally this color right here, this uh, almost white, so very slightly off-white color. Uh, slightly beige, still a bit dusty. And that makes a huge amount of sense if you actually sit down and think about it. This beadboard was most likely added the same time the floor was, which was in the late teens, so 19 teens, or the early 1920s, around the same time the bathroom upstairs was done and the butler's pantry, that being 1923. So these improvements were made around that time. So around that time, germ theory is getting more prevalent. People are starting to understand how people get sick and painting things white becomes a really, really prominent thing. 
You notice a lot of Art Deco things, black and white is really big. And that's because you can see when it's clean. You know, you know stained woodwork or shellacked woodwork would have been an earlier style. It was darker, it was harder to see if it was dirty. Whereas if you had a clean white wall, you could tell when it was dirty. And especially in an environment like a vet clinic or you know when they were grooming dogs down here, you'd want to present an air of cleanliness. So therefore, these were always painted. I found no evidence of shellac underneath any of this paint or anything like that. And so keeping with that and keeping with the original style, I do think I'm gonna paint it again. And I think once the room looks completely cohesive with all of that color, I think it'll look quite nice. And then we'll have the wooden door, which I am going to keep wooden. And I think as a complete package, it'll look quite nice. Again, this room doesn't need anything terribly distracting because the floor itself is incredible. So let this speak for itself. Also, one thing to mention, you saw me take the baseboard off of here. There's one right there actually as well. Something really interesting about these baseboards. And that being, they're not actually wood, they're stone. Uh, I imagine this is some type of granite. This one's been cleaned up and uh, kind of polished a little bit. You can see how they come off the wall. They came off the wall quite dirty. These are actually the two that I took off from over there. But this was uh, the, only, the original color and everything of what that looked like. Uh, I haven't found any evidence of any kind of paint or anything like that. They just had stone at the bottom. Which again, if you do think about it, in an area that possibly could get wet, I mean, I assume this floor has been mopped countless, countless, countless times. You wouldn't want the water to seep under. So you would have something that was stone that wouldn't absorb the water. Now, of course, it seems at some point that the watertight seal around this room broke because we have some pretty good uh, rot here at the bottom and it's definitely water damage. But of course the baseboard will actually hide that. So I'm not terribly concerned with that. Uh, the rest of the wall is pretty structurally sound. And I did have to remove these pieces because somebody had taken this section off and I don't know, done some kind of fan dangling behind there. Uh, not sure why they did that, but I do have more of this board in the garage. So I'll just grab a few pieces and I'll tack one in here. I did have a few people in the comments ask me what I plan on using this room for. And this will definitely be a room people will be able to come and stay in. So a guest room, I guess, essentially. Biggest difference between this one and like the rooms upstairs that I plan on doing the same thing with is this one will have its own ensuite bathroom. Which again, if you guys remember from last week, is what we're looking at right here. In fact, that is the shower. And if we turn away from that area, over to where the wall I was just working on was, this is where I will probably end up putting the bed. And I'm heavily considering putting a brass bed in here because I think it will fit the era. It will fit the look of this room and I think it will look really, really cool. But definitely over the next few weeks or so, this room is going to be getting a lot of love and attention because I want to get this one up and operational. And ideally, if I can get that up and operational and the bathroom down here operational, that means Kim and I can actually move down here temporarily and have our bathroom and bedroom all in one little situation. And then I plan to move over to this area, which will be the kitchen. So we can have our own little mini house within the house uh, that we can use while I work on everything. But of course, to get that done, I do need to do a few things, obviously cleaning up all these walls. I do plan on building a wall from here to here. Might be hard to see, but you can see these are angled in. So going from that window to this window, I'm gonna block off the panels here. Obviously we'll have an access point, but this isn't uh, in my plans of what I wanna see <laughs> when people are in here. So we'll build like a faux wall so you can get into those panels. Also wanna go ahead and hide this drain. I guess at some point they had a sink in here or something like that. So they have a drain, but it's no longer needed here. Uh, also to get that operational again, I would have to dig into this floor, which I refuse to do. So no sink here. We'll have a sink back that way. I also have to finish out the rest of these walls here. So essentially there's going to be a wall, a wall, a wall in the back of the shower, and then a wall there. And then the sink and toilet will be behind the shower. So like an L shape. So the rest of that has to be furred out. I have to get all the electrical in, put the drywall and stuff on this back area there. And then these walls will all get beadboard. 
And then I also have to find enough marble to do the shower surround, which will be just three big slabs of marble, um, which actually isn't as hard as you would think it would be uh, or as expensive. So hopefully that's a quick, semi-cheap, easy way of getting the bathroom and the shower up operational, and then we can all be happy about it. <laughs> also found a pair of these really cool flush mounted light fixtures this week. I think they're pretty nifty. Uh, they're of the period. They have these nice little like oak leaf wraps around where the bulbs would go. Uh, they're fairly early, again, probably teens, 20s, and uh, I got two of them for 25 bucks, which is perfect because I have two lights in here, one there and one there. I'll have something that looks maybe a little bit different for the bathroom. But you guys will have to let me know your guys' opinions on, uh, on these. But for 25 bucks, they look pretty good. They obviously need rewiring and all that, but that's all fairly easy to do. Uh, and I think I'll go ahead and learn to nickel plate so I can nickel plate these, because again, that fits the era. And actually this one doesn't show very much, but the other one I have uh, is actually nickel plated, even though the nickel plating is wearing off. So it would be an appropriate finish and something I can do here at home. So that might be a fun little science project we can get into in the coming weeks. So into the last set of time lapses, the last little project of this week, and I'll be back with you guys to discuss that after the fact. See you then. As you guys can see, one of these doors is not like the other. Now, the reason I went ahead and stripped this and I plan on shellacking it is because I want it to match this door on the other side of the room. And because I don't want to paint this, it makes sense to have another shellacked, bright, warm, red, orangish, wooden accent on the other side of the room here. So that's why these three doors will be getting that treatment. The surrounds around them will all be getting painted again in that lighter beigey whitey color. But certainly this is an improvement over this. Now I will admit this thing still needs some work. Yes, the lighting's not great here because there's some pipes blocking the light. You can see kind of in the areas where I didn't quite get all of the paint off. But with how light this wood is, it's really hard to see this without putting a little bit of something on top of it. So I went ahead and laid down a layer of shellac just so I could see this. But also it gives you guys a good representation of the color overall of what this will be. Obviously it'll be darker. This is one layer of shellac. As you add more, it gets darker. But I also found no evidence of these doors ever being in the raw like this. They were always painted. But I think they look quite nice not being painted. I'm not a huge fan of painted woodwork. I, of course, am trying to do this as true to the house as possible, but occasionally I get to make my own little decision. Uh, you guys will have to let me know what you think. Uh, you know, maybe these do look better painted. I'm not sure. Uh, it certainly needs more work. But I have to say, I think with just a little bit of warmth in this room, with, with just a little bit of wood, it'll make things I think pop a little bit and it'll look much nicer. Plus I think it'll really highlight this set of shelving. I also want to thank you guys again so, so very much for the GoFundMe. I want to say thank you guys so much. I cannot believe how much money is in that right now. Um, it's going to go a long, long way to getting that, that mansion roof done. Is it going to go all the way? No, because it's a ridiculously expensive project, but I want to thank you guys so, so very much. Um, and I've thought about it. I kind of want to maybe write all your guys' names. I think it's up to like 250 people who have donated. I don't want to put anybody's name bigger because they donated more or anything like that. If you donated one cent, I want your name on some of the woodwork there. So maybe when somebody has to replace it in the next hundred years, they can read and, and hear about all you guys' uh, efforts to make, make this old girl shine. 
Um, so thank you guys. You've really, you've blown me away. Uh, really, really, really thank you. Thank you so very much. And I've also noticed a few uh, comments apologizing because I can't donate. Please don't ever. You guys owe me nothing. Um, it blows me away that you would even consider. Um, so, you know, take care of yourselves. You guys are always more important than I am. And, uh, you know, I know it's hard right now. It's the holidays. Everybody's a bit, you know, down on the money because everybody's got to buy gifts and usually people are off work. So I totally understand. You guys owe me nothing. Don't ever worry about that. So as always, guys, thank you guys so, so very much. You guys make this journey so, so very enjoyable. So I'll see you guys again next Friday. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and an even better week. And I'll see you guys then. Take care. Bye-bye.